I definitely you do, right? believe the government okay, story cool. wasn't, That's all we wasn't talk about, about. Uh, what it was. <laughs> all right. Where have <laughs> I heard you before? This is where I would say I would be more conservative by your definition okay. than you and going okay. back to what's worked. But thank you very much for your time, Adam, sir. I appreciate the conversation. You. Very honored to meet you. Likewise. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Great day. Thank you. How you doing, Pete? Not great. Vets, vets for Freedom. How if are you? I believe you? Are you in one active? thing, it's honor. And the fact that you would walk up to someone like Dakota Meyer and confront him, I just want you to know how low that is. And it's you, beneath, it's beneath someone I can't have a conversation to criticize him? him about his service and what he's done. You I have no do idea, that. neither do I, what someone like him has done for this nation, what it means, what it means to our country. So you run were around you with there? your microphone and your gorilla camera, and no, I just no, we want you to know, I just want I you to know how ridiculous what, what it is. What brings you here? Been, I, I, I'm not answering a question of yours. I feel no need to, nor do I think you're anywhere near Ladies a Ladies and gentlemen, media Pete outlet. Hegseth of Veterans for Freedom. But I just want you to know that when you criticize the Medal of Honor recipient and bring it the way you what's, did, what's criticism? without a lack of respect. You don't know, you don't know what criticism is. I was extremely respectful. I think what he did is incredible. And I think so there's, a, there's a great noble I thing that, that we do as, 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 the way as that troops that put our lives on the line. Your service isn't anywhere near his. I said that to him. Okay. I said that exact same clear. I said that exact same thing. My combat experience experience was a sliver of his. The way you approached him is unworthy of what he did for this nation. How, how and so? That's all I have how so? What question? What, what, did I, what did I say that, that criticized him? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna back that up? You're just going to walk away now? Hey, coward, Hegseth, you're really just going to walk away? You can't answer a question? You're just going to come and criticize? You're not even going to back it up? You're just going to run away? Well, you, then what, did you, what were you just doing? You were just, you were just speaking to me? You're just clarifying? All right, bye. Run away. Run away. Run away, coward. Keep going. We'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, Pete Hegseth, the Veterans for Freedom, apparently still has not recovered from the shellacking he got when we did an interview together on TV when I was active with the Rock Veterans Against the War. This is the worst kind of neocon when it comes <laughs> to foreign policy. And we're going to show you the uh, interview we did with Dakota Myers on this YouTube channel as well. But uh, apparently asking polite questions, challenging the way that people think is disrespectful if having your you know, mind changed or having challenging information brought into your brain is, is offensive and challenging. As you can see, Mr. Hegseth, who ran away here, isn't really willing to have that kind of conversation or hear any kind of information that might conflict his, with his worldview. And that's, that's really sad. And, when, and what's really sad, and, and, and I can tell you this from, from personal experience as a veteran, is that a lot of veterans come home and because they made sacrifices and took risks to defend their fellow Americans, because that's what they thought they were doing, they're, they're incapable of questioning the policies that sent them to war. They're incapable psychologically. I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge hurdle to clear. And I understand. You know, it, it wasn't automatic for me either. You know, I had to go through this process. But you see, there are a lot of guys like Pete who they, they come home and, and questioning these things is too much. They, they'd rather just go deeper into the system. They'd rather b bury their heads deeper into the sand, drink more of the Kool-Aid, go into the propaganda, uh, rather than face up with these issues. And, and there, is a, there is a connection here with PTSD, because PTSD means talking about your experiences instead of burying them and, and dealing with the psychological consequences of that. And, and I really feel sorry for a guy like that. That, that his experience has now motivated him to a, a certain amount of, of cowardice where he's afraid of a conversation, he's afraid of ideas, and he has to come up to me and, and inter interrupt an interview, and then he has to come up to me again after the interview with that, with that sick emotional motivation, and he has to come in and, and try to bring these issues. It's really sad. And if you know a veteran in your life who's dealing with PTSD, who's dealing with this, I hope you'll reach out to them. I hope you'll share Anna versus the man with them. We've helped a lot of veterans with PTSD. I get emails all the time from guys who are on active duty, who are veterans who really appreciate hearing this perspective and having having their their stories heard and challenging that and you know I taught when I talked to Dakota Meyer today he wasn't willing to talk about his story we respected that but you know I wanted to encourage him to, to have a chance to do that and I, I hope he does and I hope he gets to address those issues too because if you're a veteran and you're dealing with PTSD you got to start talking about it one way or another you got to get it out take all those things that might be rattling around in your subconscious affecting your mind in ways that you don't really understand just just verbalizing them getting them front and center in your conscious mind is a way that you control them instead of them controlling you and that's exactly what we need to do with government question it so we control it instead of it controlling us and then 
we can establish a real standard of freedom in this country. But until then, when we have troops that are going through this that aren't coming home and questioning, we will never learn the lessons of this disastrous foreign policy. We will never be able to move forward. Troops will always be suckers as poor men dying in rich men's wars, and the racket of government will just keep rolling on. Well, it's not like going to the beach fun or making out with your sister fun. It's more like an appropriate welcoming committee, I believe.